Greetings, fellow comet chasers. As we venture into November, the night sky presents us with ample opportunities for observation. This month, two comets, 2023 H2 Lemon and 12P Ponce Brooks, are accessible through small telescopes. Additionally, three more comets will grace our skies, observable through telescopes with apertures of six inches or larger. In this month's update, we'll also address an interesting question. Why a comet impacting Earth isn't a scenario that keeps astronomers up at night, or during the day for that matter. Turning our telescopes to the evening sky this November, comet chasers are in for a treat with C2023 H2 Lemon. This new visitor begins its journey across the sky in Ursa Major, shining at magnitude 8.6. Observers should look for a 14.5 arc-minute coma, which presents a brighter center compared to its diffuse edges. However, don't expect this brightness to linger. The comet is anticipated to fade rapidly as it moves into the constellation Grus by the end of the month. C2023 H2 Lemon passed its closest point to the Sun, known as Perihelion, on October 29th. Coincidentally, this was also when it swung within 0.2 astronomical units of Earth. It's predicted to reach its maximum brightness of magnitude 7 around mid-November, making it a prime target for small telescopes. This celestial wanderer is accessible from all latitudes, offering a global spectacle. However, as November wanes, observers at high northern latitudes might find it increasingly challenging to catch a glimpse of this comet. A bit of background for those curious about its origins. C2023 H2 Lemon was initially spotted as an asteroidal object in CCD images taken on April 23rd with the Mount Lemon Survey's 1.5 meter reflector. It wasn't until later that CCD astrometrists observed cometary activity, revealing the true nature of this cosmic traveler. 12P slash Ponsbrooks, a comet that has been a recurring topic in our discussions continues to captivate us with its unpredictable behavior. As we step into November, this northern hemisphere comet begins its traverse in Hercules at magnitude 11. Observers should seek out its 2.5 arc-minute coma, which exhibits a diffuse condensation at the center. Throughout the month, expect a brightening of about 0.8 magnitudes as it journeys into Lyra, with the best viewing opportunities presenting themselves towards the month's end. This comet's propensity for dramatic outbursts has been the subject of much intrigue. Another significant outburst has occurred on October 30th. This outburst follows an outburst on October 4th, which led to the emergence of a small bright inner coma and a set of horns reminiscent of those seen in the first major outburst in July. While it's too early to detail the specifics of this latest event, the recent outburst has prompted us to revise our visibility predictions. Now 12P slash Ponsbrooks should be within reach of small telescopes. The historical significance of this comet cannot be overstated, with possible observations dating back to the year 245. Its unexpected outburst in late July, which saw its magnitude leap from 16.6 to 11.6 in a single day, left a lasting impression with its unusual coma shape. As 12P slash Pons Brooks continues its approach towards perihelion on April 21st, 2024, its unpredictable nature makes it a subject of continuous interest. While estimating its visibility can be challenging, especially with its sporadic outbursts, it's certainly worth attempting to observe. The darker your observing sight, the better your chances of spotting it. Early November might present a prime viewing window due to the recent outburst, but the end of the month should also offer favorable conditions as the comet continues to brighten. In November, 62P slash Tsuchinshan emerges as a comet of interest, especially for those wielding telescopes with apertures of 6 inches or larger. This comet, which will reach its closest approach to the Sun, or perihelion, in late December, is currently on a trajectory that will bring it within 0.5 astronomical units of Earth in late January 2024. Predictions suggest it will attain a maximum brightness of magnitude 9.5 in early January. A rare observational opportunity presents itself on the night of November 15-16, when 62P slash Tsuchinshan and Comet 29P will pass remarkably close to each other. This celestial rendezvous will offer an unusual view through the eyepiece and also serve as an excellent imaging opportunity. 
While 29P may pose a challenge even for 16 and 18 inch telescopes, requiring a dark sight and experienced observers to discern, the proximity of these two comets could be a memorable highlight for comet chasers. 62P slash Tsuchinshan holds a special place in the annals of comet discoveries. It was the first of two comets discovered at the Purple Mountain Observatory in Nanking, China, during the early days of January 1965. This comet has made several notable appearances, returning to perihelion on May 7, 1978, January 2, 1985, and August 30, 1991. Its last good perihelion passage was on April 19, 1998, when it reached a maximum brightness of magnitude 12.5. Next, we have brief updates on two comets that have been previously highlighted on our channel that are also for those with 6-inch telescopes. Firstly, C2023 P1 Nishimura, a comet that garnered much attention in September. Some sources carelessly speculated it would reach naked eye visibility, but the geometry was too poor to get a good view at that time. As November unfolds, this comet is in the Southern Hemisphere found in the constellation Centaurus, shining at magnitude 10.5. Observers should be on the lookout for its 2.5 arc-minute coma, though it may be challenging to discern. Expect it to fade rapidly, with the best visibility occurring mid-month from the southern hemisphere. Moving on, 103P slash Hartley is another morning comet that's observable in a 6-inch telescope. It begins the month in Hydra at magnitude 9.8, Observers can expect to see a three-arc-minute coma with a center that's brighter than the edges, albeit still diffuse. Hartley is also predicted to fade rapidly as the month progresses. Humanity has mythology associated with comets that goes back to ancient times. But we have mythology, too. Comets only appear in the movies if they are going to cause a disaster, usually by hitting the Earth. You can't blame people if, after seeing news about a comet, they immediately worry that it will hit us. But astronomers don't worry about that. How come? I'll show you why. Let's all go to Disneyland. Roughly at the center of the California park, there is a statue of Walt Disney. Let's take the base of this statue to be the size of the sun, about 5 feet, or 1.5 meters, across. If the sun were 5 feet in diameter, how far away would the Earth be and how large? Go ahead and come up with your own answer. I'm going to guess about, hmm, 20 feet, 6 meters away and the size of a volleyball. Does that sound about right? It turns out that's too close and too big. So how about if the Earth was the size of a tennis ball 50 feet or 15 meters away? Nope. If the sun is a ball 5 feet across, the Earth is a tiny half-inch marble, 500 feet or 150 meters away, which is way out near the Matterhorn. Here, the inner solar system, which is the Earth and other rocky planets out to beyond Mars, is represented by the entire park. The outer solar system extends across 10 miles, or 16 kilometers, of the city. This is where the huge gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn reside. Comets live way out beyond the edge of the outer solar system, where we can't even see or track them. Think of Long Beach or the mountains. Who knows how many are out there because we can't see them. The only source of light is the sun. Here in the inner solar system, it's warm and well lit. But in the outer solar system, it gets pretty dim. Beyond that, at the beach, it's super dark. A tiny shove starts the comet falling toward the sun. At that distance, it wouldn't take much. So our comet falls, taking years to arrive in the outer solar system. Eventually, the sun warms it enough that vents of gas and dust form a big hazy cloud around it. This is the coma, and it's what we actually see when we look at a comet. Most comets swing around the sun and head back to whence they came. Many comets never get close enough to enter the inner solar system and pass mostly unnoticed, except to a few astronomers who track them. The few that do continue into the inner solar system will get bigger and brighter. If our comet passes close to the sun, it may put on a big show in our sky, but close is relative. Close to the sun could be, say, within 50 feet or 15 meters of Walt. It doesn't need to get right up to it. Sometimes a comet will happen to pass close to the Earth on its loop around the sun, but again we say close, but that's still something akin to 100 feet or 30 meters away from our tiny marble. That doesn't really seem that close, does it?
It's only close in the sense that it's near the Matterhorn rather than over by the jungle cruise. You can't blame people for thinking it's a lot closer than that. So let's step back. Only a few sizable comets will pass into the inner solar system, into Disneyland, every year. So when you hear about one, remember it's not like the movies. That tiny marble sitting out near the Matterhorn is pretty safe. The likelihood of a lone mote of dust hitting it on its way through the park is pretty darn small. Beneath the serene expanse of the night sky, we find solace, leaving behind the sensational narratives and embracing the quiet spectacle above. As we usher in the crisp November nights in the northern hemisphere and the return of spring in the south, we invite you to step out under the celestial canopy and partake in the timeless dance of comets. Let the whispers of ancient light guide your gaze, and may the thrill of discovery be your companion. Until we meet again under the stars, may your pursuit of these wandering marvels be as rewarding as the mysteries they hold. Happy comet chasing, everyone. <laughs>